A question that I get asked frequently, to the point where I believe it does count as a frequently asked question, is where do I fall on the political spectrum? Who do I vote for? What's my opinion on this politician or this other, this other one, Andrew Yang, the yellow vests, what's the deal? And I always answer about the same thing, something really vague, uh, like I'm moderate right wing or center right, or an expression that I affectionate, soft conservative. Uh, but those are vague and don't really explain uh, my opinions, although they give a vague idea of where I fall. And um, the reason why I'm being so cautious and uh, not specific about what I believe in and, and who do I vote for and all that is not at all a cop-out or to protect my brand by uh, trying to appeal to the most people at once. You know, I've always been a guy that's really truthful and authentic, and even if my opinions are um, controversial or I know that they're gonna, you know, attract some uh, ire from people, I always say what I believe in. For example, I do believe that GTA Vice City is better than San Andreas, and I know that most people disagree with me, I don't give a shit, I will say it anyway. I think that Kanye West is boring, and uh, also that other guy that sounds exactly like him, but with Kenny G tier uh, saxophones flailing in the background. I always forget his name. Uh, he made uh, Good Kid, Mad City, and, and other absolutely boring shit just like that. Anyway, uh, some of my opinions are controversial. And uh, I am not afraid to voice them and to be authentic and to be honest. Uh, but the reason why I don't really talk about my personal politics is because I don't really have personal politics. And there are many reasons for that. But I would define myself, to be really accurate, I would define myself as politically confused. Cause when people ask me who do I want to vote for, who did I vote for in the latest election, which candidate I really want to win, uh, I never know what to answer. And there's a reason for that, is because I don't vote. And it's not because I don't believe in voting, although there could be, like, I have my doubts about the efficacy of the democratic system, and I have my doubts about uh, how, you know, reliable most politicians are, you know, I'm not a hundred percent believer in the system of voting, I'm not a big fan of it, although I do think it's one of the best shit that we have come up with, like, there probably could be some better systems, but it's still one of the better ones that we have, even if it's far from perfect, but anyway, I digress, uh, what I really want to say is I don't vote, and not because I don't believe in voting, not because I don't want to vote, not because I'm too lazy to vote, or to pick a candidate, or, you know... The reason is that I've never found a candidate or a party that seems to really connect with what I believe in, with my opinions, um, and I know people who are kind of in the same uh, situation as me and they try to find the uh, least bad one, you know, or the most inoffensive one or the one that has the, the least amount of opinions that they disagree with, stuff like that. And it makes sense, it makes sense. But I tried this technique and still it's not enough. It, I never found a candidate or a political party that really corresponded to my opinions and I never even found a candidate or political party that loosely, that vaguely fit uh, to my worldview. And 
I don't really know what I am. I think I'm a kind of right wing because usually when I see left wing politics, I despise them more than I despise the right wing politics, but that's not a huge difference. And when I, the more time I spend with people on the left wing, the, the more I realize that I'm not one of them. And the more time I spend with people on the right wing, the, the more I realize that I'm not one of them either. I mean, I used to be for a long time really attracted by conservatism and conservatives put me off it, you know, uh, just talking with conservatives uh, kind of put me off conservatism and I don't like it anymore. Uh, although, you know, I, I like the idea of, I don't know, lower taxes, especially for businesses because this, because that. Um, but the, yeah, there are many reasons why I'm, I'm so confused. And uh, one of them probably is because I've been in the past 10-ish uh, years so, um, you know, witnessing the fact that from country to country politics um, are so so fundamentally different especially the right left uh, divide uh, like when I see how politics are, are understood and made in France and when I see how they made in the in the US for example there are so many differences and the, the very idea of left and, and right are so different in, in these two cultures that um, it kind of made me reject most labels, you know? I like the idea of socialism, but I'm definitely not a socialist in reality. I like the idea of libertarianism, but I'm definitely not a, a libertarian. Although there's, I think they made some valid points. I think the socialists made some valid points. I think the right-wing people made some valid points. Conservatives made valid points. They all, a lot of parties, in my opinion, make valid points. And I say that when I when I look at most, uh, you know, manifestos and. Uh, literature, you know, pamphlets from uh, any party, really, I say I always agree with about 10%, 15%, maybe, and I kind of disagree with the rest. That's, that, yeah, that's why, I, that's why I don't vote. I never found a party or an organization or a candidate with whom I agree on more than 50% of uh, points, you know, whether it's with economy or infrastructure or I don't know, healthcare, defense, whatever, uh, anything really. There's never been a candidate with, with whom I, I agree with more than half of things. Um, so it's it's hard, and there's a lot of times when I thought, like for for example, when I discovered. Conservatarianism, um, at first glance, it seemed to correspond very well uh, with a lot of my core uh, values and, and opinions, you know, that, that um, it's a mix of conservatism and, and libertarianism and it's center right and it's, uh, it's very interesting with me, it's, pr it's pretty right wing economically, but it's not on a... a societal level and it's because it's you know I'm not gonna give my opinions one by one because it would be an incredibly long list and also there's a lot of stuff on which I'm on the fence you know I'm on the f I used to be on the fence uh, for even more things and I make more and more choices because I get more and more information and I get to talk, uh, debate with a lot of people. And uh, I used to be, for example, with the, for, about the death penalty. I used to be on the fence for such a long time. Uh, for uh, like 10 years, I couldn't uh, form an opinion on it. Uh, I was not against it and I was not in favor of it. 
and it was really really hard uh, and after yeah 10 ish years i choose to be against it uh for for uh, a few obvious reasons but you know like gun control for example i'm totally on the fence about gun control i don't think it's a good thing and i don't think it's a bad thing and there's so much stuff to be said about it and to be you know there's so much pros and cons to weigh uh that uh, i cannot i cannot form an opinion on it the more i try the less i am able to you know really make up my mind and uh i i believe that welfare is good but also i believe that we tend to pay too much taxes and i I don't know, I'm not uh, in favor of uh, open borders, I'm, I'm pretty much against open borders, but still, I believe that the people who make points against, uh, I mean, in favor of open borders, have some valid points. Uh, I'm there's, there's some stuff that I'm really in favor of, like for example, abortion, there's no, uh, I've never heard any good argument against abortion. I've never heard any valid argument against abortion. So I'm absolutely in favor of, uh, you know, abor abortion rights um, for, uh, you know, no restrictions, no, what no whatever. And um, that's one of the few issues that I'm really not on the fence for, but every other issue I'm kind of conflicted at least a little, uh, like for example, the environment, protecting the environment, is it really useful? Is it just anthropocentric? When people say that we're gonna destroy the earth, uh, are, are we really? Or are we just making it not viable for other human beings? Uh, it's kind of a, most environmentalists and, and, uh, and anti-environmentalists I've talked with sound really hypocritical and just saying random shit based on random beliefs that they had and I've never really been convinced uh, by uh, people and yeah a lot of people who I know who are like for for uh, for the green party and environment they sound like fucking morons complete morons and a lot of people I know who are against environmentalists also sound like complete morons when they talk about the earth and the environment. I've rarely heard people talk about this issue and sounding like they made sense. Like for real. So uh, that's, um, I tend to see um, everything as shades of gray, you know. I'm one of these people who don't believe that anything is good or bad. I don't believe in that shit at all. And um, I think everything has he its. I think everything has its merits and its demerits. Uh, it, its pros and its cons. Its uh, strengths and its flaws. And um, everything is a mix of good and bad. And it's not always easy to. Um, do the math, you know, between the pros and the cons, and sometimes the pros and the cons don't really outweigh each other because they are on different, you know, planes. And you can have a lot of pros and a lot of cons for for things, and there are many, many things um, that you could say that about. Like one of one of the things I'm really uh, I've, I've got a lot of conservative and I've got a lot of libertarian in me and I've got some socialist too. And so towards the, the, the police, towards cops, I'm really, really conflicted, you know? Because on one hand, I, I don't like this uh, monopoly on violence that the state has. I really am not a fan of this. And on the other hand, I, I think that without uh, any any structure to enforce uh, law, we would be in a bloody mess, like Lord of the Flies, Mad Max bullshit, and uh, 
most of us would be, you know, eviscerated in a gutter. Um, and they are, I, I believe, they are absolutely necessary for uh, things to work, for society to be a thing, and us not being absolute cavemen. But on the other hand, I think they have way too much power and they are not accountable enough. And um, I mean, and I'm simplifying because it's much, much more complex than this. And there's a lot of talking points that could be said, but this video was like 15 minutes already and I don't want it to be too long. Uh, I think 20 minutes max, so I'm gonna, you know. And that's also the problem with politics. Every time you want to talk about one subject, even something simple like infrastructure. Infrastructure is so important and it's a subject that I'm kind of passionate about. And most people find it boring, even myself. I, it's, it's interesting and boring at the same time. It's, uh, but it's so important, you know? If our roads stop being maintained, you will fucking notice it and everything will fall apart. Because without infrastructure, you cannot have transport. And without transport, you cannot have anything, you know. Supermarkets will close down and <laughs> the trains, all that shit. I mean, it's so fundamental to society, infrastructure. It's so, so important. Just the fact that there are garbage bins on the on on the sidewalk when you walk uh, in the street so you can you know put your trash in a bin instead of littering i think for example that littering is a grave offense and it's not repressed enough i think there's a lot of uh, laws that are too harsh like for example uh, drug use i i'm a firm believer in uh, legalization of all uh, you know, narcotics or whatever you, you call them. And um, I don't think that the fact that there are illegal drugs is a good thing. I don't think you can say anything good. I think the war on drugs is maybe uh, one of the worst things that has happened to society, to the world. And deep down inside, I hope that in a few years, maybe 10, maybe 20, maybe a little more, maybe a little less, there will be some kind of, like the trial of Nuremberg, you know, and the people who, who enforced and who made the war on drugs will be on, on, on trial for this shit and they will be publicly shamed in the whole world and they will be, will be revealed as perhaps history's greatest war criminals, you know, it's something that, you know, uh, that I'm really, really... Uh, believe in, it's one of the rare things that I really believe in, is that the war on drugs is 100% negative and there is no good argument you can do in favor of it. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I believe that uh, people who do tags in the, in the streets, you know, tags, that's fucking ugly, that's vandalism, it should be repressed more. It's a real problem and it's much even just not ugliness, but it has been proven scientifically. Recently, uh, I mean, people have suspected it for a really long time, but it has been absolutely proven uh, recently by scientific teams that living in an ugly environment is detrimental for your health and living in a place that you find beautiful uh, makes you uh, healthier. Like, it's, it's a real thing. And so, People who do tags are responsible for making everyone's health worse. So I absolutely think these fuckers should go to jail. And I don't mean graffiti like the drawings. I mean, I mean tags, you know, people who just uh, put their name like the equivalent of a dog pissing on a lamp post. It's absolutely caveman-ish and it should be repressed more. This littering should be repressed more. DUI. DUI should be a fucking crime. It's a felony in most countries, you know? But driving drunk should be a crime and you should go to jail for it. It's incredibly irresponsible and dangerous for other people. I don't give a shit for stuff that endanger just you. But if you are endangering other people, then absolutely you should be more 
uh, punished, you know? And um, that's why people who do drugs, they're not, they're not hurting anyone, really. Uh, but there's stuff that are dangerous and that people don't realize. Like, for example, not wearing your seatbelt. People think it's just to protect them, but it's not. When you are thrown out of your vehicle, you can do a lot of damage to people around. And a lot of people have been killed by people who have been ejected out of their vehicles because they didn't wear the seatbelts. Wearing your seatbelts is not to protect you, it's to protect other people. So, a lot of people don't realize this shit, and that's a shame. That's, a, that's, there's no other word. That's absolutely a shame. So, uh, I'm gonna end this video because I'll be ranting on vague shit and just not really saying anything more if I continue. Because, you know, I could say there's this issue that I'm not sure. Of. I'm not sure, you know? This issue, this issue. There's a lot of stuff that are full of pros and cons, and uh, maybe you guys can help me. Of course. This is one of the reasons that I'm making this video, is to have opinions, is to have debates, is to uh, try to find something and maybe try to, to make you guys feel uh, less um, alone if you are like me, you know? That's important too. But really, if you know of a candidate or a movement or a, maybe not a candidate, because I'm in France and you are likely not, because only 1% of my audience is in this country, but a, a, a movement, a party, a, a thing that could be interesting for me, even if it's just to know about him. Comments, of course, comments are here for that. It's good to have compliments, it's good to have insults, but to have interesting discussion on these vlogs is what it's really about. And um, I'm gonna say one last thing, one last subject, because one thing I get asked a lot about for some reason is the um, the Israelo-Palestinian conflict, you know, the war between Israel and Palestine. And a lot of people are asking me, where do I sit on this particular issue? Like, it's one of the questions that I get asked the most often. Like, really, am I pro-Israel or anti-Israel? And the answer I would give I mean, we give several answers to this, but the first answer I would give this is why... Why are you asking me? <laughs> uh, why are you asking a fucking retarded internet comedian about this? And I think this is revealing of a larger problem. It's people who base their opinion on the opinion of actors and comedians and models and you know it's been this uh why are you listening to these people instead of experts instead of people who know what they're talking about you know i mean at least as a comedian you would say that i have to have a keen eye to observe the world around me to find the humor in it which is absolutely debatable but don't ask shit posters about this don't ask don't go on instagram to see the opinion of james fucking charles about this don't don't ask fucking gwyneth paltrow what she believes uh, about the war in in yemen or uh is does she even know what yemen is i'm not sure of this anyway um municipal ethics law it's uh is much more important and relevant to everyone but wh why don't ask people like me don't ask people like me their opinion on important stuff like like this you know uh, i mean you can ask of course uh, but first ask yourself why you know it's, it's probably not a great uh way to form opinions to to base them on uh I wonder what's, what Ninja has to say about this. I wonder what Kimstar has to say about this. I wonder what... I don't fucking know. JK Rowling. 
Now, that's an opinion I would like to hear. Just for the hell of it. Just for fun. Jaden Smith! I would like to know Jaden Smith's opinion on the Israel-Palestinian conflict. Now, that... That would be interesting. That would make a great podcast. Anyway, there's one thing I can tell you about, though. Because, well, first, my honest opinion, and this is not me protecting my brand again or doing a cop-out or whatever, my real opinion on this is I don't have an opinion on this. It's a problem that seems really complex. And what I can tell you is that the people who defend Israel, like, what, no matter what, and the people who are against Israel, no matter what, they both sound always like complete morons. It's if it's if there's one issue on earth that requires the use of a maximum of nuance, that's the one. That's really the one thing that you don't want to be for or against it. That's really the thing where you want to see all the details, all the stuff, and look at all the pieces of the puzzle in its complexity and say, oh shit, what a mess. That's probably the, the most elaborate um, opinion in, I, I have on it. Oh shit, what a mess. And no, I'm not really for or against anyone. It's just... And I don't, I don't really believe that we get all the information about it. It seems obscure for many reasons. And it's... And, you know... I don't think most of us know enough about it to form a real opinion. But... What I can tell you, what I can absolutely tell you, is that if you are one of these people who equate being against Israel's politics and their, you know, being uh, skeptical of the good heart of Zehal, and, you know, if you equate being against the Israeli government with being an anti-Semite, Fuck you. Like, you are not part of the problem, you are the problem. Um, if you are one of these knee-jerk Pavlovian monsters that just reduce the thing, simplify it so much that it's completely disfigured and unrecognizable and just say, if you are against Israel, if you think what they're doing is wrong, you're an anti-Semite. Absolutely, your opinion does not matter. Nobody gives a shit, and your opinion doesn't matter for anyone. Uh, that's, that's the worst take that you can do. That's really the worst thing that you can say. Anyway, in general, you know, reducing uh, a country to its government and saying, oh, uh, the U.S. are doing a lot of war, so I hate the U.S., I hate every American. Stuff like this. Not really how it works. At least that's not really how it should work, in my opinion. And we're closing in to a half an hour, so I think that's uh, a lot already. I'm not going to cut anything, because I think... That's a complex issue, so I should not just cut it down. I believe everything I said, even if it was vague, and if, even if it was just rumbling, everything matters. Uh, or nothing does, but then why cut anything? Yeah, 29 minutes. That's enough. Uh, I hope you got my point. <laughs> I sure as hell didn't get my own point. But yeah, uh, I'll be talking about this probably more in detail in the future. Um, but uh, for now, thanks for watching. Say thanks especially to my patrons on Patreon and Facebook and Kofi and everywhere else uh, who helped make this show possible. Uh, what else? There was a lot of new design in my boutique, uh, a lot of new shirts. I've been making uh, a lot of progress on my merch store recently, so probably visit that. 
if you visited uh, uh, like a week ago and there was nothing, there's a lot of shit now and there's going to be much more um, during a whole month of April. And, and I'm working on a lot of designs and collaborations with artists and stuff like that. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching, anyone. I wish on you peace, good health, and don't forget to smash that motherfucking like button. Peace.